Hey guys, my name is Jason. We're part of the Modern Surgeon team. You're probably wondering before you start your surgical rotation what essential skills you might need to know. Today I want to go over with you the subcuticular suture, which is the suture that you apply to the very last layer of closure. This is after you've brought together some of the deeper layers that hold some more strength. So you've closed your fascia, you've brought your muscle layers together, you may have even thrown the deep dermals already. And the subcuticular is <clears throat> the thinnest layer that just approximates the skin together so that it heals nicely. Typically, you'll be given a very small suture, low profile suture. Otherwise, you know, it could be, it could be something like monochrome or biosyn um, that's absorbable, or some people like to use very thin bicrol. Uh, the concept of a subcuticular suture, and this is actually quite challenging for med students when they first start out, is that instead of taking sutures that are you know, deep to superficial, uh, as in you're kind of going deeper into the body and then grabbing layers, the sub-Q suture goes into the layer of the skin. So for instance, now if you were to imagine for a second that this pink layer of felt is the subcuticular layer that you're closing. Okay, so imagine that the layer of skin that you're trying to close is this pink felt layer. Um, it's thicker than what you're traditionally gonna see in the OR but just for demonstration's sake. Uh, what you're gonna end up doing is, now imagine that you've already anchored this suture at the end of the incision. Because it's gonna be more natural for you to use your forehand, typically I close my incisions from the right side of the table to the left side of the table, um, or the right side of the incision to the left side of the incision, or often if the incision is facing you vertically, then I sew towards myself forehand as opposed to going backhand, which is gonna be away from you. Now, if you look at this layer, I'm gonna demonstrate for you the course of the needle. So I am driving the needle into that plane. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the suturing that we do goes in and out of the body, right? So you've thrown stitches that go through the skin and out of the skin. But for subcuticular closures, you're going into the layer of the skin so that if you were to look at it from the outside, the suture does not show. You know, you stay at the same level, same depth throughout the trajectory of that needle. It's really important for you to think about using your left hand very effectively. Oftentimes people say, grab where you think your needle wants to exit. So after I've come out from this side, I go across to the other side now the needle has to enter the other side at about the same location where you came out on the other side, right? On the first side. So I'm gonna go across the other side, do the same thing that I did, where I run the needle through the layer of the skin, and then I pull it through. Make sure it doesn't get caught on anything. So I'm gonna do that again and come to my side. Again, I notice where I came off or when I came out on the other side, come directly across, take a bite into the plane of the skin, make sure that it's not coming out through the skin. When the needle or the suture comes out through the skin, we call it buttonholing. And what it does is it <clears throat> pinches the tissue or exposes suture material outside the skin, which you don't wanna do. So I'm gonna take a couple bites just to demonstrate, you know, it's going back and forth. So again, far side, and then my side. Far side. You wanna make sure that you grab enough skin that it has some strength to hold on to. At the same time, you don't necessarily have to grab so much skin that it dimples excessively. So that means you're rotating your wrist and making sure that the curve of the needle catches enough of the skin so that there's some strength to your closure. Now, if you did a good job of going back and forth from the side that's close to you to the side that's far away from you, when you spread the tissue apart at the end of your closure, you're gonna see something like a ladder. And it makes sense why you're seeing a ladder, right? You're going across at the same level that you exited one side and entering at the same spot. So whenever you cross from one side to the other, it should be parallel. Sometimes when I look down at the incision, 
as I'm closing it, I envision that there is a suture that's following a snake-like pattern from one side to the other, one side to the other, curving back and forth. And then it doesn't surface from the water, it just swims just underneath the surface, crossing back and forth. So I'm gonna take a couple more bites. Notice again how I use my left hand. It exposes the skin where you wanna be exiting with the needle. So I enter here, which is across where I exited on the other side. And then the, the, the forceps were holding the skin close to where the needle was gonna exit. So I showed myself a clear trajectory for the needle. So here, I'll just demonstrate an error. So I entered at the level of the skin, but the needle exited through the skin. So this is a this is a, um, an observable difference between the needle staying at the level of the skin versus going through and exiting the skin. So you don't wanna have the needle exit the skin. If you encounter a scenario like that, just take it back out. You can always take these sutures out and do something a little bit better so it corrects the mistakes. Okay, so by the time you get to the edge of the incision, you would tie a knot and then ultimately anchor the knot. <clears throat> what anchoring the knot means is that you know, when you tie a knot, it's gonna wanna stand up or stick out of the incision, which you don't wanna expose any of that suture material. So let's imagine for a second that I, I had already tied the knot, but I wanna bury it underneath the surface of the skin. So what I do is I take the needle, I take a bite deep into the incision and exit somewhere further away. And notice what happens as I pull this suture out through an exit side in the skin. That loop of suture will pull into the incision because I took a needle and took a bite underneath the incision. So as I pull up on this, it'll bury the knot and the remaining suture deeper into the tissue instead of allowing it to stick out outside of the incision. So what you do at this point is that you simply cut the tail flush at the skin and you don't expose any of the sutural material at the end. All right, so that's a subcuticular closure. It's probably one of the most common things that you learn how to do in the OR first. And once you demonstrate proficiency with this, because it's actually technically very difficult to do a good skin closure, you, you know, which is ironic because you think that skin closure is something that should be technically very simple, but because for all the reasons that I mentioned, you have to stay at the layer of the skin and use a lot of different needle angles for you to be able to do it effectively, it actually is quite challenging. So once you can demonstrate your skill with this, I think you'll find that a lot of other stuff that follows during operations is actually quite straightforward. And uh, that's a subcuticular closure.